you know if if god wants to give you a blessing there's nothing that's going to stop him from blessing you we live in a devil's world we know we have to go through some trials and tribulations but there are some people whom if god is going to bless they feel like and i'm one of them i feel like if god is going to bless me the devil could intervene somehow or stop it or that because it's the devil's world that God is not going to bless me because the devil's world and I need to go through the sufferings or I don't even know how to phrase this um I guess what I'm trying to say is let's say I'm going to get a blessing from God right let's say I read a scripture that that gave me an indication after I said a prayer to God that I'm going to get a blessing and when um When I opened the Bible, the scripture that I got was a scripture about a blessing, right? So now I'm thinking I'm going to get a blessing. I'm thinking it's a sign from God, right? But now the person that I am, <clears throat> I realize whose world I'm in. The world belongs to God, but God has allowed the devil to rule the world. And that's why the world is as bad as it is, because it, 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 it um, it reflects its ruler but since I am in the devil's world like Yeshua our master prayed that because he is leaving the world he's praying for his disciples because they are still going to be in the world and he's praying to his father to protect them because of the devil right in a sense our master had to make that prayer in a sense beg his father to please protect them because they are still in the world and the devil ain't playing around right now you would think why would Yeshua have to pray to God for that shouldn't God do that already well that's part of the reason why we got to pray too <laughs> because God allows me things to happen which is why we don't need to worry so long as we pray right but um that's why Pope Peter said do not be anxious about anything but in everything along with thanksgiving let your petitions be made known to God and then after you make your petitions known to God do not worry about anything after that because God is with you we are not orphans we have a father right so prayer is important and if you don't pray well then expect anything at all to happen to you because time and unforeseen occurrence before us all as proverbs said written by solomon so i guess what i'm trying to say is um even though i may think i had a sign that god is going to bless me right i know i'm in the devil's world and i can say my prayers for god to protect me but it's like It's it's not it's not that I'm doubting God or his power, not at all. But I know that God allows many things to happen. And he could allow me to not have a blessing, if you understand what I'm trying to say. You know, I don't know how to put it. But um But it just dawned upon me that um if God says he's gonna bless somebody, he's gonna bless them. And and and, and he's he's gonna bless them, and there's nothing that's going to stop it. None of the demons can stop it. The devil can't. Stop it. The devil can't do anything unless God gives him permission. And the story that I was thinking about was the Book of Job. You know, um, Job is in the devil's world, right? He was in the devil's world. The devil couldn't do anything to Job. The devil wanted to, but he couldn't. He had to get permission from God to do something to Job. And then God gave him permission. But if God did not give him permission, the devil couldn't have done anything. So even though the devil is powerful because he's an angel, right? He's a son of the Almighty. He's an angelic spirit being. He's a he's a uh, uh, he's a cherub. So he's a powerful angel. He's a high-ranking angel, as described in the book of Isaiah and Ezekiel. Even though he is, you know, type strong. <laughs> He can't do anything unless he has permission from God. You recognize that to challenge God's sovereignty or, or no, to challenge God's um, um, morale or, or, or to challenge God's intentions is not the same as challenging God's power. What the devil did and is doing is challenging God's intentions. 
He's saying God doesn't believe. He told Adam and Eve, God doesn't really love you. He's hiding things from you. He, the devil is insinuating that God is holding good things from us, which is this, the real reason why God sent his son to die. Because what does, why did he have to send his son to die for us? Like, what does that really accomplish? You could eradicate our sins without sending your son to die for us. But he sent his son because by sending his son, he's showing us that he's willing to pay the highest price to show us that he loves us. So if he's if he's done that, the devil, no one, neither us or the devil can say that God doesn't love us because God has already given us our very best, which is why Paul said, if God has given us his very best, what else would he not give us in his son's name if we ask him? He's already given us his best. <laughs> so so where's the argument that God doesn't love us if he's already given us his very best? He could have done he could have saved us, you know, from our sins without sacrificing the son. But he chose to use the, 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 the route that would be the most costly to him, sacrificing his most beloved, precious son. Okay, so 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 the devil is insinuating that God's intentions are impure, but we already know that he's a liar, and that's been proven, right? That the sacrifice has proven that that God loves us without a shadow of a doubt. So what the devil challenged was God's intentions. Because you can't read God's mind. So the devil thought that God had bad intentions for us by holding the tree of, you know, knowledge of good and bad. And eventually the, the tree of life, right? So the devil challenged God's intentions. But he did not challenge God's power. Because that's clearly evident. Right? So even though the devil does what he wills, do as thy wills, as the satanic Bible says, even though the devil does what he pleases, he knows damn well that if God tells him not to do something, even though he is an arch enemy of God, he knows better than to disobey God when God tells him not to do something. So basically, God is just allowing the devil to prove his case. God can shut down the devil at any time, but he is the father of, he is, he created, you know, he created the, the, the angelic being who literally became the devil. So, well, basically, the devil is his son. Okay, that's his son. His son went renegade, right? But that's still his son. And there is an angelic court. And God, if God was to kill the devil as soon as the devil disobeyed him, then who said that the other children of God would have would have would not have said that hmm, maybe the devil was right. That's why God killed him. Because you really think the devil was the only one who was probably thinking that? No. Because later on, a third of the angels left and came and slept with the doors of men. So, so these angelic beings, they, they have free will. They, they can think for, them, for themselves. They're not, they're not robots. So by God letting the devil prove his case, he is shutting down that question once and for all time so that no one can ever bring that case up against God ever again. There was another accusation that the devil made, which is why it's taking some time to, for, the level, for the devil to prove his point, which he, he's obviously wrong. But God is allowing the court case to proceed, right? There are different stages, different hearings, just like we have on earth, different, you know, procedures for a court case. So, so now the other sons of God, if they ever thought like what the devil was thinking, they now know, okay, yeah, now nah, we, we were way off. We don't, we can't read the mind of our father, but he definitely has good intentions. He sacrificed his only begotten son. <laughs> you know, he didn't send one of us. No, nah, he sent his very best creation well if you guys don't believe christ is a traitor being but that's let's not talk about that so um god sent his very because god himself cannot die so god didn't send himself to say god died i mean but anyway um so uh scripture said god loved the world so much that he sent his son he didn't he, did, he didn't love the world so much that he sent himself god told abraham sacrifice your son he didn't tell abraham sacrifice yourself if you love me he said sacrifice your son isaac if you love him right he could have said to abraham to sacrifice himself if abraham loved him but that was a foreshadow of what god himself was going to do the greater Abraham. So God didn't tell Abraham to kill himself because God wasn't going to kill himself. God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac because God was going to sacrifice his son, the, the the greater Isaac. But anyway, um, so my whole point of this video is um, I was thinking that okay, so basically, basically, the devil can't do anything unless God gives him permission. And the only reason why the devil can do certain things now is because God is allowing him to, to prove his case. But if God says, you can't touch this man, the devil can't touch that man. He can't go and touch the man and then think God ain't going to do nothing. No. If he does disobey God in any other situation, for example, if he told 
when he when he gave Satan the permission to to um test Job, what did God tell Satan? He said, "There he is in your hands. Do whatever you want to him. Only do not kill him. Do not do not take his soul." Now, the devil knew better than to disobey God, and the devil did not kill Satan. I mean, the devil did not kill Job. But let's say the devil did disobey God and kill. See, the devil's not stupid. He knows that if he was to do something like that, God will kill him or give him some punishment or whatever that he wouldn't like. So the devil knows better. And the only reason why the devil could do what he's doing now is because God is giving him permission to prove his case. So my whole thing basically now is that if God says he's going to bless someone, if God says he's going to bless me or you or whomever, there is no reason for you to fear that the devil could intervene in that blessing. He is not going to be able to because God is not going to give him permission and God is not going to allow him. But now if you were to deviate and disobey God and do stupid things, break his laws and break his covenants, right? Or if you break a vow to God, right? like, like Yoshua said, it's better to not make a vow to God than to make a vow and break it, right? It's better to not make a vow to God than to make a vow and break it. So if you break a vow to God, you know, or if you dabble into demonism and spiritism, if you watch demonic movies, if you've got demonic films in your house, if you got the Ouija board in your house, you're that's why certain people get possessed because God has removed his protection from them and now the demons can do whatever they want to to that person. That protection from God is no longer with them. But if a person is being faithful to God, if a person is searching for God, seeking God all the time, and God is going to be with them and that there's nothing that the demons or the devil can do at all. No matter how much they would want to do something to you, they cannot because God is the Almighty. And God is everywhere at all times. It's not that God is like here and there and there. No. God fills the universe. Or I should put it this way. The universe is within God. You understand? The universe is a small part of as vast, as, as ridiculously incomprehensibly large as the universe is. You can't even comprehend how large it is. Okay? As vast as the universe is, it's within God. So God is literally everywhere within the universe. You see, his spirit fills it. The Bible says, do I not fill heaven and earth is the utterance of the sovereign Lord, Jehovah. Do I not fill heaven and earth? In other words, the universe is within me. He is everywhere and his eyes are on everyone at all times. Scriptures in 2 Chronicles 16, which I made that my last video was about this, actually. Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 16, God said, the eyes of Jehovah or the prophet Hanani said about God, the eyes of God are on everyone at all times, ready to prove his power in behalf of those whose hearts are complete towards him. So if your heart is complete towards God and he has a blessing plan for you, the demons can't do anything about it. The devil can't do anything about it. All they can do is be angry at the fact that you're going to get your blessing. <laughs> That's it. So my thoughts before were just, you know, um, I, mean, I already knew this, but it just dawned upon me that I actually know this. And I just thought I would share with you guys. Um, the scripture says that, um, yeah, you can have faith, but faith is not enough, right? Because even the demons have faith in God. They know he's there, but yet they have faith in him, but yet they, sh they, they shudder in fear because they know how powerful their father is. Okay, so... um. That's the uh, that's that's what uh, I guess I probably would post this, and those who get this far would get the benefit of this message. Those who don't care to listen, well, you probably get this message somewhere else, or you probably won't get it at all, and you'll find out at a much later time when you would have been glad that you had listened to it much earlier. <laughs> so uh, yeah, peace, y'all.